Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Kingdom Advancement. I am Apostle Sonia Chambers. We welcome you to come on in worshiping and praising the Lord. Uh, let's just magnify him. Let's just glorify him. Let's just lift him up. Abba, Father, you are King, you are Lord, you are Master, and besides you, there is no other. We worship you, O God. We magnify your holy name. Worthy are you, O King. Mighty are you, O Master. We love and adore you tonight. So welcome to Kingdom Advancement. Again, I am Apostle Sonia Chambers, and I just want to welcome you in and encourage you um, tonight. Uh, I just want to give one or two announcements. Remember, it's daylight savings time tomorrow. So for those who are going into fellowship, the clocks are going forward uh, one hour here at Gather in New York City. Uh, we will be doing uh, an unusual celebration called Boost uh, Worship. It will be it's seating for only 12. So uh, those that have registered will be attending. And it'll be our gather, um, Stand Bear Ministries gather service um, this Sunday. Tomorrow will be at 11 a.m. So remember that because we usually have our services at 1030. But it, tomorrow, because of this unusual booth service, we'll be having it at 11 a.m. So tonight I wanted to talk about one word. Actually, what happened was it was in the middle of like the morning and I just heard this word altruism, altruism. And I was like, what? I said, I've heard it before, but the word altruism means uh, the belief in or practice of disinterested and selfless concern for the well being of others. So let's say that again it's the belief in or practice of disinterested and selfless concern for the well being of others. And, you know, as I heard the word and I, I thought about it, I had to say to myself, are we there yet? You know, am I there yet? Uh, do I believe? Am I selfless in my concern for the well-being of others? And tonight I'm asking you the same thing. Are, are You know, are you there yet? Are we thinking of others? Are we thinking about their issues? Are we thinking about their circumstances? Or are we uh, self-absorbed where we're only focused on, you know, what the Lord can do for us and resolve our issues and, re you know, resolve all the things that are around us, but not for others. So tonight I wanted, you know, as I was sitting there and I said it, I, you know, I kept saying this word over and over again, altruism, altruism. And I was saying to the Lord, like, you know, why, you know, what are, what are you trying to tell me? And I want to encourage you tonight because when he said it to me, you know, altruism, altruism, I'm like, okay. And he just said, finally, I heard from the Holy Spirit, all is true in him. And one of the things we have to realize as Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, all is true in him. There was no, there was no sin in him. So as you continue to move forward in who you are called to be in Christ, you, we have to know that we have to be kingdom citizens. We have to operate like him. We have to have selfless concern for the well-being of others because that's what he did for us. We sing a song, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. I used to sing that when I was in church as a young uh, like teenager, and I never understood it. But the thing was that he had selfless concern for the well-being of me, the well-being of you. So I want to encourage you tonight. And I just, this word is called altruism. Altruism, the belief in or practice of disinterested and selfless concern for the well-being of others. And I kept saying it over and over because sometimes, you know, you hear a word or you read a scripture and you just, just blow through it. Like, okay, I got this. But I kept saying the word over and over to myself, altruism, altruism. And then I heard all is through him. And I, I said, my goodness, 
because because he had dis is disinterested and selfless concern for the well-being of me for the well-being of you for the well-being of your family for the well-being of a of, of a nation for the well-being of a globe because Jesus died on the cross for you and I all is through him so guess what Philippians 4:13 says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and I'm gonna say you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. All is through him. We don't have to carry the issues. We don't have to carry the burdens. You don't have to worry about things alone, but you got to invite him into your life because he had selfless concern for the well-being of you. He had selfless concern for the well-being of me. This is the altruistic behavior. That is the behavior of, of a Christian. That should be our what we exhibit, not backbiting, not fighting, not gossiping, not competing, but completing in Jesus' name. But all is through him. And because all is through him, you don't have to do it by yourself. Oh, you don't have to do it by yourself. You know, I remember when I was in school and sometimes I take tests and I'm like, Lord, you're going to have to help me because I'm not even sure what the answer is. But when you realize that all is through him, and you can all things can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You don't have to be um, feeling inferior. You don't have to feel like you can't uh, move forward. You can't. You can't be limited by your marital status. You can't be limited by your educational status. You can't be limited by your financial status because all is through Him. Because He had selfless concern for you and for me. So we have to step out by faith, knowing that all, because all is through him and you can do all things through, mm, you all things can be done because it's Christ that is strengthening you, not you yourself, because you were bought with a price. So I want to encourage us tonight because I'm encouraging myself because sometimes I feel like, boy, there's so many things to do. Like, you know, can we get it all done? But I had to stop and I, I, I lined things up. I was talking to um one of our leaders tonight and uh, she was saying to me, are you ready for the next thing you have to do? And I was saying, I'm dealing with today. And I said, I have to deal with altruism first and I'll deal with boost tomorrow. And then I will go on to the next thing. And tonight I want to help someone because your mind is too far into next year already. You're already into May, June, and July, and we got to just take it one day at a time, knowing that all is true in him, in Jesus Christ, and all is, th all is through him. That's how you're going to get it done. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you need to get to know him because sometimes you're carrying too many burdens and, and stresses and anxieties and worries, depressions, and you're trying to do everything on your own, and only it's Christ that can strengthen you to move you forward to the next level. Amen. So I have one more scripture. Acts chapter 17, 28, because we're talking about altruism. We're talking about selfless concern for the well-being of others. And it's the belief in or practice. So it, it's saying, the, do you believe that, that you have selfless concern for others? And do you practice that? Because we can all say we believe it. We can all say, well, you know, Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. I met a young man and he said to me, my mother goes to church. And I said to him, does your mother go to your job? You got, we got to do this thing for ourselves. It's not related to, um, you know, it's not, salvation is not a, a, a relative. <laughs> it's not, it's not a cousin. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ that you've accepted him as Lord and Savior. So yes, you went to your grandmother's church. Yes, you might have went to your aunt's church. But that does not mean that you're in full relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to accept him as Lord and Savior. You have to accept him as master. You have to turn your life over. You have to invite the, the Holy Spirit into your life to lead and to guide you. Because all is true in him and all is done through him. In Jesus name. So Acts chapter 17 verse 28 says, for in him, because remember all is through him, for in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, 
for we are also his offspring. And that's what we have to accept. And we are offspring. I remember um, early in our ministry, uh, I ran the young adult portion of the ministry. I was the young adult pastor and I called that team progeny. And I, the name progeny means offspring. And my goal was that they, as I exemplify and as my late husband exemplified and, and we, we sought after Christ and we tried to pattern ourselves to be Christ-like in our dealings and our behavior, that we would have offspring of that magnitude that if we could teach them how to love God themselves, that we could teach them how to hear God for themselves, and we could uh, not that every decision that they're making, they have to come back and run by us, but you could hear God for yourself. And then you could come back and say, you know what, this is what I heard. Not that it was instructional, but it was intentional that they would hear God and then execute what he was saying. Offspring. And that's who we are in the body of Christ. We are Christ's offspring. It should not be that those that don't know Christ yet look at us as we're some type of alien. We are supposed to immerse ourselves in the culture just as Jesus did. He walked around. He talked with each and every type of person. We weren't selective. It wasn't that we only hang with church people. No, we need to be out here in the world, walking, moving as we do in our jobs. In when we're at work, we're not with just people that are saved, but we need to exemplify being those that are saved so they can say, why is it that even though the boss wrote you up, why is it that the boss don't like you, that you can still be at peace? that you can still have joy, that you can still laugh. We're talking about having selfless concern for the well-being of others and also to exercise being Christ-like, being his offspring, being his example, being his masterpiece to the world. I want to read it in Amplified. It says, the same Acts 17, 28, it says, for in him we leave in him, for in him we live and move and exist. That is, in him we actually have our being. As some of your own poets have said, for we also are his children. We are children of the most high God. And we have to operate in that way. It's not always easy. I didn't say we didn't, we never said it was going to be easy, but we're talking about all is true in him. So that means we're not going around lying and, and conniving and doing poor business deals. And all is through him. When you feel that you can't do it anymore, allow Christ in, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. Because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens, the scripture says me. But tonight I want to say who strengthens you as well. Because this is not about me. Because the thing is, we have to have selfless concern for the well-being of others. We must. So I pray that even now in the name of Jesus. Father, help us. Show us those that we should reach out to. Show us, Father, those that we should care for. Show us, Father, those that we should share with. Touch a neighbor. Touch a friend. Touch a child in Jesus' name. Show us, Lord. Allow us to be altruistic Christians, people that believe and practice selfless concern for others in Jesus' name. So here we are, Acts chapter 17. They, I just kept reading one because sometimes, we, as I said, we run through the scriptures, we run through words that the Lord gives us. And I kept just saying it over and over, altruism, altruism. And Acts 17, verses 28 to 29, I'm reading it in the message. And actually, they, I think it kind of starts at 24 because, you know, the message kind of makes it a little bit clearer. It says, and I want us to just think about this because we're his offspring. So verses 24 to 29 says, the God who made the world and everything in it, 
This master of this of sky and land doesn't live in custom-made shrines or need the human race to run errands for him as if he couldn't take care of himself. And I that, that I mean when I read that I was like, "Okay, God, okay." It says he don't need us to do things for him because he makes the creatures. The scripture says he makes the creatures. The creatures don't make him. Starting from scratch, he made the entire human race and made the earth hospitable with plenty of time and space for living so we could seek after God. And tonight I'm praying because outside of being having selfless concern we gotta want to seek after him we gotta want to spend time with him we're gonna have to sit in his presence we gotta encourage others to 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 move into relationship and not into religion in the name of jesus i you know i was talking to a relative uh tonight and you were saying you know i want to connect with you on next sunday will you go to church i said no no i am the church I don't have to go anywhere to be in relationship with Christ. I don't have to be somebody. And I'm not saying that we're not supposed to be in fellowship because I, I'm a firm believer in fellowship, but it's not related to a day. It's not related to a day. It's related to relationship. So the scripture goes on to say, starting from scratch, he made the entire human race and made the earth hospitable. With plenty of time and space for living so we could seek after God and not just gr grope around in the dark, but actually find him. And tonight, Jesus is looking for you. Some people feel lost. They feel abandoned, feel disenfranchised. You might have lost your job. You might have had a death in the family. You might be battling an illness. But I'm saying tonight, seek after the thing that is first, which is the kingdom of God which is, and his righteousness and everything else will be added. But you got to get into relationship because we do this. Because altru you know, altruism could go a different way. You can have selfless concern for the community. You can, you know, be activated to do things. But if you're not in relationship with Christ, some all of that work is burnt up. So it's time to put Jesus Christ at the forefront. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added. Because the worst thing you can do is spend a life serving. And then when you get before the judgment seat of Christ, you hear that that was just a waste of time because you didn't get to know me. So tonight, if you don't know him, you need to get to know him. Because I'm having selfless concern about those who do not know him. It's important. We have to share the gospel of Christ. We, you know, we think that we have all this time. But the reality is when your eyes close and the, and the breath leaves your lung and your heart stops beating, we, we've run out of time. So while this time, while we're still breathing, living, speaking, it's time to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Let me end this scripture. It says, he doesn't play hide and seek with us. He's not remote. He's near. We live, we, hallelujah, we live and move in him, hallelujah, and can't get away from him. Can you imagine that? No, you, oh God, there's no place that you can travel. You could travel to Thailand. You could travel to Dubai. You could go to Australia. There's nowhere you can get away from. You can go to Europe. You can go to Africa. You can go to one side of the United States. There's no way you can go to Tokyo. You can go to Japan. You can go to, there's nowhere you can go from him. So he's looking for you. Can he find you tonight? I'm just going to end it. It says, one of your poets said it well. We're the God created. Mm, hallelujah. We are the God created. Well, if we are the God created, it doesn't make a lot of sense to think we could hire a sculptor to chisel a God out of stone for us, does it? So what was happening here was the Apostle Paul had, had you know, come into an area where there were a lot of idols. And they had chiseled out even a, a, a God, 
that was the unknown God. But that was the true and living God because they knew there was a God that even though they chiseled it out, he was not framed that way. He could not be an idol. He's a savior. He's a, he's a father. He's a master. He's a king. And, and the apostle Paul was, you know, correcting them, but he was also teaching them and they really wanted him out of the town, but he started preaching on the street. And when he started preaching on the street, people started to receive Jesus Christ. And I'm saying that tonight, if we really have this altruistic behavior, if we really have this issue and need, the belief or practice that we want to be selfless and concerned for others, some of us going to have to hit the street. We're going to have to do like the apostle Paul came in with, uh, about idols, got frustrated that he saw the idols. And, you know, sometimes we get frustrated because we keep doing the same things over and over looking for the same uh, different results, but we're not getting different results. The Holy Spirit is very creative. He's able to give you ideas, visions, and dreams of what you're supposed to be doing. And I'm saying to you tonight, tap into what he is doing. But remember, when he starts doing and working through you, remember to have selfless concern for the well-being of others. Being a Christian is not being about ourselves. Being a kingdom citizen is not being about ourselves. We're walking in Christ's likeness. So tonight, I just wanted to encourage you because it's time to know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. It's time, and you know, we say it, but it's time to know this thing in Jesus' name. It's time to know that in him we live and move and have our being, and we are his offspring. And if we are our children, we got to have to lift our heads up high. You got to walk in the boldness and the strength of who he is, because you have strength from him and not your strength yourself, you're able to walk with your head held high. So I'm talking to that person that thinks that, you know, you have to be a woe is me Christian. No, we can walk with our heads held high because we are kingdom citizens. We're walking as heirs to a throne in heaven. So I encourage you tonight. All is true in him. Mm. And all is through him. So what you worrying about? He's concerned about you. So God bless you all. Because, you know, the Lord is so concerned about us. I usually have a story and I just, it's going to be the most simplest story. I don't, you know, I needed to get something for an outfit. And I was just, you know, sitting. It's just simple stuff because sometimes we want God to do all these big things, but sometimes he do just simple things. And I was, you know, I was saying, oh, I need, you know, I need something for it. And I just sat there and sat there and I, I picked, went to BJ's locally and picked up something. And he said, this is the store you go to. Listen, you could ask God anything because listen, all is, <laughs> all is true in him. And all is through him. So if you ask the Holy Spirit, he will guide you. He's concerned about your outfit. He's concerned about your situation. He's concerned about your children. He's concerned about your health. He's concerned about your finances. But you got to turn it over to him. Turn it all over to him and release it. You know, he's the best strategist. You know, I was thinking about, you know, even this service that he patterned for us tomorrow. I said to the Lord, like, you know, when did you start limited service? Like, you know, you're saying it's 12 people and that's it. But he's the God. He can do whatever he wants to do. His ways ain't our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. I don't know why he does some of the things he does. We can't explain God. He's higher than us. He created us. So I'm encouraging you. He's giving people visions, ideas on creative ability, and you're just sitting back on it because you've never seen it done before. You don't have to wait on anyone. Be the be the game changer. Be the trailblazer. Be the pioneer. But do what the Lord is telling you to do because time is of the essence. We don't have the time. Look, the clocks are moving forward tomorrow. Can we move forward? In Jesus' name, it's time to move forward forward in Jesus name and not just sit back. 
trying to figure out, you know, how's it going to work and can I do it? You you already got the goods. If you got Christ, you got it all because you can do everything through Christ who strengthens you. So God bless you all. I love you all. Um, shout out to the, the women in London because I will be heading in that this week. Uh, for Walking in Feminine Excellence, which is part of Kingdom Advancement Global. Um, it's our women's initiative to just start to ignite women and empower women to step out and be who they are called to be in Christ. Because being a wife is not a marital status. You walk out your feminine excellence. Everyone has a journey, but we're able to walk it out and be the best of whatever we are in whatever sphere of influence we are. So, um, you know, just keep us in prayer because we're spreading our wings and I'm, you know, I'm thankful for the leaderships that of the, the other standard bear ministries upstate and, and in Florida that expanding their borders as well. Cause the goal of kingdom advancement is to empower and equip leaders to move out, to be all they are supposed to be, to empower and equip business owners, to be all they're supposed to be. Cause marketplace is one of the biggest places you'll meet more people in the marketplace than you'll meet in church as new visitors and people that don't know Christ so that we can advance the kingdom of God. This is about advancing. We're not retreating. We're moving forward. We're, we're closing up some of the breaches. We're killing some of the gaps. And I pray that you will get on God's army and step out by faith and start to execute who you are in Christ and whatever sphere of influence you are. So God bless you all. I love you all. I'm Apostle Sonia Chambers. I'm the Apostolic Leader of Kingdom Advancement Alliance, and I'm the Senior Pastor and Overseer of Standard Bear Ministries in New York City, in Florida, and upstate New York. Um, it's time to know that all is true in him. It's time to know that all is through him. And it's time for us to become altruistic Christians. So God bless you all. I love you all and good night.